Well, at the National Women's Championships 2019, she performed about 2600 ELO after 10 rounds. Uh, she scored 10 out of 11 points and that is Bhakti Kulkarni. Uh, she played simply phenomenal chess uh, to win the 2019 Women's National Championship. As you can see on your screen, this is Bhakti's performance here. She had uh, nine wins and two draws uh, performing at 2543 and gaining 38 elo points so that takes her beyond 2420 and she is this is the final standings here she finished one and a half points ahead of the entire field so it's my immense pleasure to invite bhakti kulkarni uh, to discuss with her her games from the national championship hi bhakti how are you yeah, I am feeling great uh, after winning this nationals for the second consecutive year and I am more uh, satisfied with the way I played because uh, in the earlier year uh, I had won the title on the Vissau tie break but here I was one and a half points ahead of the second place so I am really happy. Well Bhakti you, you played 11 rounds of uh, tournament and then you travelled from Karaikudi to Chennai and Chennai to Goa but you don't look at all tired. <laughs> Maybe it's because of my title. <laughs> and also, I would, for this thing, I would like to give uh, credit to Vijaya Lakshmi and Minakshi's uh, uh, family because uh, before going, actually before going to nationals, I had to stay at their place for two days. Mm -hmm. uh, since uh, I don't have direct flight, uh, it's on alternate flights to uh, Goa Chennai. Yeah. So, I stayed uh, two days at Minus place and I was very happy playing with her brother, with her son. So I could completely forget about the tournament for two days. I had complete flax. And then after coming back from the uh, Karaikudi tournament, I stayed at Vijaya Lakshmi place where she had uh, her son and two more uh, cousins. So I really enjoyed with uh, their family. So, so you got a very nice feel, nice change from the chess environment every time you visited their place. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Which everybody I think needs at some point. So yeah. I happy I could get it before my important national. So, I am really thankful to both of them. But I think in a way you are going through one of the best phases of your chess career. I mean, if you have, if you want to play chess, now is the time you want to play because you have been like, doing phenomenally maybe you gained around 100 or 120 elo points in last six months yeah that's true i'm really enjoying chess because i think uh, on here i used to focus only on my rating because at some point i was stagnated uh, with around 2300 or 2900 uh, rating so the moment i stopped worrying about it and the moment i started focusing on my game it really helped me wow so, yeah, and the main uh, turning point, uh, I would say, that was uh, when I got selected for the World Women's Championship. It was in the month of March at uh, the Pakistan. Uh, the uh, the wo World uh, Team Championship, you mean, yeah? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. And, and you played really well there. Uh, that boosted your confidence. Yeah, exactly. So, so with this, you have now reached a rating of nearly 2430 and you are, uh, I think, India number three behind Humpy and Harika. Uh, it's no pressure, yeah, on you right now. You're still... No pressure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because right now, my only concern is to improve at chess and not after Well, with this attitude, I think it would be yeah. perfect to, to look at your games and to understand how you were able to bring this approach of uh, just focusing on your games and improvement in your uh, battles in Karaikudi. Sure. So, so you started off the tournament with four and a half out of five and then came this phase when you scored five wins out of five rounds uh, and this these five wins came against uh, very strong players like Divya Deshmukh, Soumya Swaminathan, Nandida PV, um, Minakshi and Priyanka, all all uh, really strong chess players. Uh, I think so. So we should begin with uh, Divya's game, uh, which was. But but I would be very keen to know your thoughts on Divya because uh, she's just thirteen years old. Yes. She's very talented player, and uh, I think she's very 
fortunate that she has got both the parents who are supporting her, who are leaving their job and traveling with her all the time. So, and she is, I think, making use of it. She is uh, really performing well. And uh, yeah, I have seen before playing her, she has already played in four tournaments, very strong tournaments. Uh, and just before coming here, she has won sub junior nationals. So, I was actually looking forward to playing against her. You, you are not you are not tense playing her like uh, this young kid i don't know was it the first time you were playing her uh, it was the second time okay uh, first time i had played some years back i think when i had one okay because of that maybe i was not tense <laughs> okay so so uh, we 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 can start with that game and in that she played uh, trompowski which she often plays uh, in her tournament so did you expect it Uh, and somehow I felt I was, I could not give my best in the end game, but I had uh, really good chances to win. So, kind of, I remembered uh, Adivan's dialogue mm -hmm. that he used to say, when you, if you, are, if you have lost the game or if you have not played well, then it's best way to forget the previous game is by, is by winning the next game. So, somehow I tried to focus on my coming game rather than focusing on the past. So, I got some two hours in between. And I prepared this uh, system against Tomkowski, which my coach told me. And somehow I, I didn't expect her to play it uh, because she plays many other lines. I actually expected her to play in for against Then uh, when she played Tomkowski, I was a bit comfortable because only in the game, uh, Black gets Bishop pair. Okay, under the position is quite close, still it's. Uh, I feel it's easy for black to play too. Yeah. So so she she took on f6, uh, queen f6, knight c3, d6. Uh, this is uh, all quite well known. Uh, bishop g7. And uh, you were you have less space, but you have the bishop pair. And then when you castled, uh, she she went for the direct move uh, e5. Uh, did you expect it? Right. So, so you played uh, instead of uh, castle. She went e5 straight away. Yeah, you 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 played knight c6, and uh, when she played queen f4, uh, what were the calculations that were going on in your head? Because now it started some kind of a tactical battle. Yeah, so knight f6, uh, you had prepared king h8 over here, and now the threat is d e, d e, and knight into e5. Okay, fantastic. Here, I feel there is a lot of black square for black square for black square for white square, which does not have black square and the king is mainly the same. Yeah. So she. Yeah. Yeah, you you actually won a pawn when you uh, you know one of the best things that you did in this tournament was that you were converting your better positions uh, very well. Uh, so any any uh, advice on that part because I saw so many games in this tournament where people were better and just missing out, but you were very solid. Yeah, I think uh, for this I would like to give the credit to uh, my Rakhi brother, Grandmaster uh, Amrit Rajpala. Because uh, before the national, I had a session with him. 
Okay. Really? Wow. Yeah, because uh, I was actually suffering from this point, uh, till Asian, Asian continent, but if you have seen my game, in Asia, so almost in all the nine games, I had the advantage, but somehow I could not convert it because of some, some other problems like time pressure or anything. Hmm. Really. So I think one of the most important things while converting an advantage is when to exchange your pieces. Yeah, exactly. So, so here uh, you you decided to keep the queen on the board. Yeah, mainly because of her unsafe uh, king. So okay. The king is not that safe, then uh, try to keep the queen on the board so that it can create some deadly threats uh, around. It. Yeah, well, it looks all very logical when you say it after the tournament, but I think on the board it was not easy to decide on Queen E8. Uh, and then uh, I think once you played Queen E8, everything else simply flowed uh, after that, yeah? Um, uh, because the main point is after Queen E8, I have to keep an eye on the table. And also, this Bishop attacks the queen, so she cannot castle long. And if she castles on the short side, then sometimes after f5, g5 or some f5, yeah. g5, there would be some attack on the king side. Yeah, it's... Yeah, I think this game uh, you, you played really well and towards the end, I think on move number 27, you, you sacrificed an exchange here with rook into d3 uh, and you converted it uh, very nicely. I think it was a very... Beautiful end. Okay, so so uh, Bhakti, if you don't mind me asking, when you worked on this uh, camp with uh, Ankit, uh, what were the things that you did apart from just looking at your games? Were, were there anything? Because this is a very common problem that every chess player faces about converting winning positions, and actually nobody has a very clear cut answer as to what to do. For example, on move number 11, uh, with that help, I was actually, uh, it's, I found it very easy to find this knight c6 move on move 11. Otherwise, for me, it would have been very difficult. I could have just focused on d into e5 or something to open the center. Okay. Yeah. So, so that so was the main thing. Uh, why did you play uh, knight c6? Because you wanted to keep the tension in the position? Or yeah, keep the tension in the position at the same time trying to get other pieces in the game. Like my queen side is slipping, so I had to find something uh, to get the pieces out. At the mm. same time trying to stop opponent's idea. Because now opponent's idea is maybe just to play long castle and uh, then start h4, g4 attack on the king side. Okay, okay. Uh, so also prophylaxis is one of the main points. So, so, so uh, when you are converting an advantage, you must take care of when to exchange and yes. also your opponent's ideas. Opponent's ideas, yeah, yeah. yeah. These that two is very, are very important. important. Yes. And I think everybody knows it, but it is very difficult to follow it. <laughs> you can't play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can say it any time of the day, but because you have won the national championship so convincingly i'm i'm sure people are going to listen to what what you are going to say it's it's uh, really important uh, so let's let's go to your uh, second game uh, of uh, from this event uh, this was uh, against i mean this was the sixth round game 
uh, against Soumya. I think uh, she has been one of the top players of Indian chess for right. so many years very now. Experienced player. She is a very nice tactical player. Yeah. What What has been your uh, score with her? I mean, uh, have you have you has she been a comfortable opponent for you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Somehow, because somehow the the games which we have played uh, becomes either either tactical or positional. So. Somehow I could manage to win. Uh, yes, and her. and, and uh, we we remember your uh, beautiful checkmate H into G two. I think it was with oh, her, right? That was in that game. I was actually lucky. Yeah, you were losing <laughs> that lucky. game, but yeah. then the end was very beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, in this game, I think uh, the main emphasis uh, surely is in, on the opening phase because yeah. it was a Grunfeld, and and you were able to get a very Good advantage. Uh, where did she go wrong, actually? Uh, okay, I will first like to tell you about the opening because she has tried almost everything against me. We have been playing um, almost in every nationals or in national team. So she has tried different openings like Kings Indian or uh, Benoni Slau. So I knew that she would go for Krimpe this time. And uh, my coach Gokulesar had actually suggested this knight d2 on move nine. So it is a very rare move, and if opponent is not ready, then she might come in some opening press, some pressure uh, right in the opening. Right. So after playing knight d2, she started thinking from that point. So uh, right in the opening, I was having some thirty minutes advantage on the clock. Okay. Yeah. So which put her extra pressure, uh, put on her extra pressure. Okay, I think the main uh, drawback was a uh, b5 on move. Well, I, I uh, but just like the move. just to clarify after knight d2 you can't take on c3 because of rook c1 and then rook into c5 yes 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 uh, and uh, so my next idea is to play knight b3 so for example if she castles then i am going to play knight b3 attacking queen and the pawn on c5 and if she takes on d2 okay, there is a well known bishop d2 bishop c1 draw but definitely i won't go for that i would have taken on c5 ah okay yeah uh, i i'm uh, so so if suppose she castles you play knight b3 first yeah and there is one option yeah there is one option of knight b3 and going for a draw with bd2 b1 otherwise you can just continue developing with bishop e2 or bishop yeah three. well this knight d2 knight b3 reminds me of that queen sacrifice somehow it's not not coming here uh, kartikeyan queen sacrifice uh, yeah <laughs> that was amazing game by kartikeyan <laughs> yeah but okay she, knight d2 cd uh, cd and now after short castles uh, you went bishop c4 e6 yeah. castles and now you said b5 is a is a mistake yeah yeah because i think uh, her queen side is still not yet developed and because of that after b5 she is losing control over the c5 square and uh, the main point is after b5 she is not able to play she is not getting bb7 immediately that's the whole point of b5 okay so, The the bishop is not coming on b seven, then it's just a weakness. Yeah. Uh, so I felt she should have played uh, maybe knight c six, and she could have continued slowly with rook d eight, and then at the right moment b six or b five. Yeah, but once again after b five, uh, I think when you uh, won a pawn here, uh, this was after e five knight e seven. Rook F B one. Uh, already, you are you are much better here. But after uh, taking on B four uh, and winning this B four pawn, we again come to this same situation where you are a pawn up and you have to convert this. Uh, did you think it was easy to convert this one? It was not at all easy because on move number uh, on move number twenty second, I had missed her bishop D seven, which was a very nice move. Okay. So I played by playing queen c4. I am just pinning my knight and allowing her to develop her bishop to c6 and exchange my light square bishop, which would give her total control over the d5 square. So when I saw b7, I was a bit upset that how can I miss this move? Okay. So after that, I was only playing uh, just to improve my position, and I was just not thinking about winning or drawing. <laughs> well, already we were in uh, heavy time pressure. By this time, I think we were playing on some three or two minutes each. 
right definitely it was not easy to convert but somehow when she played uh, f6 on move number 31 that gave me some hopes because she is uh, actually weakening her e6 pawn so i am getting at least one target for my knight yeah when she played uh, f6 here uh, this is the point and then uh, she should have just uh, stayed there and played yeah. but she yeah. is and yeah the, the last last end was um, i think you you would not have expected that she would go king e7 there yes that was legend uh, surprise i think <laughs> yeah i just ended after uh, king f6 yeah played, and she resigned okay so another nice nice win for you i think by now your confidence would have been very high yeah definitely because i i was able to beat the top seed so definitely and by this time i had taken the lead of half points i was very happy yeah exactly um okay my next game was against nandita so even that game was very uh, very important for me and nandita is definitely a very strong player because yeah. she had uh, win, she had won uh, recently this international master norm in european tournament yeah so i knew it's not going to be easy but but what always uh, is interesting is how you approach such games and so when she played e4 uh, you were there with your scandinavian yes i had expected her to play e4 uh, and uh, i knew she would not give so much time for e4 d5 because i had rarely played this line i think many years before so and especially this queen f i had never played i think this was a opening surprise for her and on move 10 when i played king into d7 that time she was really confused like she thought that okay she had a very good op very good opportunity to maybe checkmate my king but somehow she was not able to find anything so she was very upset after that uh, well yeah. king into d7 was it uh, your preparation or over the board no 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 oh it was over the board and, and you were you were like happy to make this move or you were i, I was I was actually very happy to play this move because somehow I felt that okay this is a very nice thrilling move and she can't take advantage of it really so why not king into d7 and also the point is if I don't take with the king she is getting this d5 pawn break which is very deadly yeah yeah if if you uh, don't take with the king if you play queen d7 then d5 is pretty strong uh cd loses to bishop b5 and if you take knight into d7 still there is d5 so overall i mean king d7 is not just a, a stylish move but it's also the necessity of the position yeah. <laughs> but still it looks very very beautiful uh, in fact there have been quite some games which have been played with this move as we later found out okay uh, long castle rook d8 and then uh, once you got your king to c8 i think the basic point was psychologically she felt she should have met your king but she was not able to so she uh, faltered yeah there uh, generally when black castles on the long side generally white has his pawn either on c3 or c4 but here the problem is i think her pieces are a bit misplaced like the knight on c3 has no option no future and bishop on c4 is just looking at my e6 pawn which is really well protected so she cannot even sacrifice so somehow and i think for her style this opening was the perfect choice because somehow she wants to complicate the matters with uh, some uh, very sharp uh, variations but here the position is very cool and calm and she has to keep lot of patience to improve too so i was very comfortable yeah you here. you you played exceedingly well was there any critical moment in this game that uh, where you you think you played well I think on move number sixteen when she played bishop f two, I felt uh, this was the critical moment because she doesn't have any other weakness other than uh, d four, and somehow she will try. I thought she will try for g four h four to get space on the other side. So here I was not sure whether to go for h five or to allow her g four and then play h six. But then finally I thought prophylactically that okay I have to play h five so that. uh she doesn't get g4 and then if even if she gets g4 we can sometime play h into g4 and get the rook from h file maybe in the end game so i thought and i played h5 there so i think that was important and then um uh 19th move was also very important uh where i played c5 
this was a strategical decision i felt because she is trying to get space on the king side and at that time i have i feel i have to strike in the center with c5 because her pieces are not ready and once uh, her black square bishop gets exchange i felt her king side pawns are a uh, bit weak in the end game yeah but then uh, you you had to play knight d5 you got this uh, sort of an isolated pawn on d5 but you immediately were able to uh, play d5 d4 and uh, next also actually here the position looks very good for black but it's not that good because i think she should have kept the knight on e4 and tried for something like rook d3 and trying to attack the d4 pawn but she immediately took on c5 on move 25th so that gave me a very nice uh, diagonal for my g6 bishop and always this d3 <coughs> d3 is yeah yeah exactly uh, so so you you were able to finish off this game also pretty well i think um, yeah. just uh, taking uh, the viewers through to the game uh, king b7 you played queen f5 uh, and then h3 pawn was first one uh, and then the c2 pawn then the f3 pawn i mean you had a lot of pawns uh, at some point and then then you won okay this was uh, a nice win and moving on i think by now it was clear that uh, you were the favorite to win this tournament uh, did the title or anything create any pressure on you because uh, yeah you are playing uh, just for uh, good games and good moves but now you are 7 and half uh, out of 8 so that's already a lot of points no i was definitely playing for the title uh, not jo not just for the good games or anything because finally we need to win titles so and actually when i saw my pairing of ninth round that i was paired against minakshi i was bit worried because uh, i remember in 2017 national she had bitten me very badly so and uh, we we don't we never know when she plays really well so i was <laughs> i was uh, okay not that confident but so i decided to well also you Genuinely went to her focused. house and uh, she was a very kind host to you a so very sweet host <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so. okay but but you were not so kind on the board uh, you you <laughs> began with e4 and you know bhakti this is something which uh, is is sort of new in your uh, armory you're playing e4 you're playing d4 you're playing all sorts of different chess openings you were hardcore d4 player actually Yeah. uh now you're playing different things is this a conscious decision why, why did you decide to do this actually uh, frankly speaking uh, my all the opening uh, the opening choices are um based on my gokhle my coach gokhle sir's uh, advices he and i trust him blindly because he knows what my opponents uh, will feel or what they will reply to my opening so i think he has got a very nice uh, sense for that uh yeah i i understand that you trust your coach but when you play e4 and you don't know the opening that will be quite dangerous no <laughs> yeah luckily luckily <laughs> yeah uh, i could make all the maybe so, but you uh, you have prepared e4 as well quite yeah, well yeah i had prepared e4 but very few lines so i really want to prepare it in deep uh yeah and against uh, okay minu i have seen her playing many lines from uh, against d4 so like greenfield or many other lines like b medoni or um, benko so for me i felt e4 was a safe choice and also that would give her some surprise right in the opening yeah that was so you basically uh, yeah. always try to surprise your opponent before they surprise you i think this is one yeah. of your uh, yeah. key things yeah. uh, so d6 she played the perk and uh, I was actually not expecting her to play d6. I thought she would go for uh, Sicilian. So Sicilian. yeah, so actually on move one I got a shock, <laughs> but I decided okay no problem let's play let's play all the principled moves. But why didn't you play now on third move c4 and you could have uh, taken the game into King's Indian territory already? Yeah, because I have seen her playing uh, c4 e5 and some kind of old Indian structure. So. I didn't okay. want to go for that. We kept it in e4 territory. You played yeah. knight c3. Yeah. Uh, and I think in in this game overall, uh, even with say c5 yeah. in this position after move 14, uh, 
uh, h3 but she played yeah. e5 uh, there five yeah i had never expected her to play e5 because somehow this is uh, this is this is not like a king's indian position because b file is already open so if e5 she's trying to transpose it in king's indian then it would favor me yeah and uh, yeah what you said is right she has to strike with either c5 or d5 correct yeah so here yeah. c5 or d5 would have been better but yeah. okay she played e5 and now uh, you were you you snatched up on on a5 uh, yeah. i yeah. think i was very happy to play d5 and block her g7 bishop first of all and then a5 yeah after getting a5 uh, i think my play is a bit easier compared to her because now she has to do something to complicate she played f5 and actually and and this is where i think a lot of times uh, people make mistake because you know pieces uh, somewhere outside and this is what i loved in your games overall you you never mm -hmm. really uh, missed your uh, chance like f5 you could have gone wrong but you were so calm you you went knight g5 and yeah was, uh, this well is this is one of the point uh, which helped me really like trying to focus on the uh, principled moves like with the move f5 i thought that she has weakened her e6 square so why not immediately go and strike with uh, knight g5 and knight e6 so now she has to play knight c5 again and then i exchange one of the minor pieces so uh, the more i exchange minor pieces i think it's easier for me to, for me to get, go into the end game better end game yeah exactly so queen h4 and then f3 you you were uh, you gave up the c4 pawn and then now uh, you have a passed a pawn yeah. so that that's clearly better here actually on move number 25 uh, when she played queen g3 i was not sure i was whole time thinking about king h1 with the idea of maybe bg1 and bh2 but somehow i felt okay she has uh, she was uh, actually on time pressure she was having some around 1 minute so uh, psychologically i thought that it it would be better to take her knight on f4 which is uh, the only attacking piece and yes. which is yeah and it turned out to be a very good decision because yeah after take take ef5 the entire thing is sort of stabilized now no no yeah. more attack right and now my i my knight gets a very good square on e4 uh, and if she takes on the f5 with the pawn then her pawn structure is b very bad yeah. so somehow amazing uh, yeah, yeah it so, helped me so she went rook f8 rook a2 and then you push the pawn and and here you were uh, very very bold uh, you you took an took on f4 then you took on f5 and uh, yeah she lost a rook uh, after rook a6 yeah. because there was queen c8 coming in yeah i think uh, it is very important to uh, think maybe deeper because many times we don't even consider moves like bishop into f4 uh, which i played on 26 move because we get too scared of opening the bishop so yes. some sometimes i think it is very important to just try to consider the moves try to see at least two three moves deeper then you will understand that it's actually not that dangerous that we were thinking so that yes. attitude yeah, yeah. i i here. you know in one of my uh, reports i i wrote that if you were a cricketer uh, <laughs> then you were uh, seeing the ball like a cricket a ball like a football yeah yeah, like, yeah yeah i had really liked that report <laughs> because yes. because in a way uh, like whenever there were some things happening in the position you mm -hmm. you had full control over it like here you know you take on f4 and even if the diagonal is opened up you know that nothing is happening like sometimes yes. you miss like a check bd4 check or something and it goes wrong but nothing of that sort happened with you <laughs> somehow because her queen maybe was on g3 caught up now after e into f4 it looks uh, okay not so good on g3 because there are no other pieces to attack yeah yeah but you 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 saw it all very well and then uh, i think we come to the the final sort of finale because this is where you won your title uh, with one round to spare you were playing against uh, priyanka uh, yeah again a talented youngster very talented she again she, even she has scored uh, international master norm and uh, mainly she had beaten the uh, second spot uh, leader maybe Vantika. Uh, Vantika yes. Agarwal, yeah, in the previous round. So again, it was a <laughs> maybe I can say it was a very tough decision which opening to go for, and I decided uh, this e4 if I line because 
psychologically speaking if she gets attacking position she feels very happy yeah. so we tried to keep the position as dry as possible and she was actually very upset after seeing this g6 move on the third, uh, third after move. after you played the move g6 uh, she g6, was very upset yeah, yeah here yeah yeah and then uh, c3 uh, do you do you uh, give lot of importance to your opponents expressions yeah actually <laughs> so you you look at their yeah. face uh, after yes, making yes yes maybe maybe not from uh, right from the board maybe i go around and then from there i try to watch them i i know is there is one language? picture of you you were standing behind priyanka in that round and that was a nice picture yeah. sent to us by oh. gopa kumar so you yeah, yeah, yeah. you look at your opponents uh, possibilities perhaps of yeah yeah from other side yeah from their point of view i try to guess what they are going to play next I think in this game uh, maybe the critical moment was when she played bishop e3 and you went knight c4 uh, I guess you you didn't expect her to play queen c1 there Yeah uh, Yeah even actually bishop e3 is uh, I don't feel that's a good move because it allows me knight c4 and tempo and then I get the bishop or if she wants to st- save it she has to go back to e1 oh, sorry c1 So I didn't really like B3 move. Maybe she should have played a uh, simple like rook e1. Yeah. But it's very difficult for white side if yes, the opponent you, you is very aggressive. Yes, you put her in a position which she was not comfortable. Yeah. I was thinking if bishop e3 maybe not knight c4 she yeah, can play exactly. bd4 and give up the b2 pawn. Yeah, that was uh, one of the possibility, but then after knight into b2 Again, she has a few options like queen c1, queen d2, or queen e2. Yeah, queen e2, perhaps. And yeah. And and maybe she she has compensation there, but after knight into e3, maybe. queen e3, uh, here, yeah. uh, you you were like uh, you made some really nice moves. You first went b4, pushing the knight, yeah. then c6. Uh, yes, again, I tried to play principally. So like uh, I thought okay I I have got a bishop pair so I need to open the position so then if I play c6 immediately she gets uh, rook d1 and knight d5 at some point so then I came up with b4 and then c6 So you took uh, so you yeah. played c6 she took knight c6 rook d1 and this is not an easy position to assess because the d6 pawn is weak did you feel you were yeah. better here Uh not really but I felt okay uh, it is some kind of awkward position for me because of this d6 but i i had seen some positions some games where black gives up that pawn and for that he gets lot of initiative and sometimes we get b2 or a2 so i was fine with this position you are fine with it yeah uh, and and uh, rook c8 bb1 rook e8 you brought all your pieces into the play uh, and then yeah. a5 uh, knight f4 queen f6 and when she played b3 you went knight e5 uh yeah here i decided to exchange one of the minor pieces no, the thing so is, that i, I cannot to, even find yeah. one one bad move in this game like it was really a well played game right oh thank you yeah there was there's no real uh, place where you went wrong uh, she could have improved her play but then i think after yeah. knight d5 it was uh, one way traffic yeah Yeah, because I get opposite bishop where my bishop is stronger than her. Takes takes and well, what do you think about this uh, end game that came up? Uh, and and you specifically mentioned something about the opposite color uh, bishop end game that you studied, or I don't know, maybe you like those very much, or what is? Yeah, I love opposite color bishop endings because uh, somehow I feel uh, in that in that position we can feel the beauty of chess. and uh, you can feel I the really beauty of them. chess why yeah in in opposite because we don't know what exactly would happen but uh, like for example in my game it was um, uh like on move number 53 i had given bishop f4 check so, so in some uh, opposite color bishop endings there are some uh, patterns of uh shouldering the king or blocking the king on that long diagonal and then getting the king on the other side so this kind of tricks i really like in opposite b endings okay and what yeah. do you think about this end game after move 45 uh, bishop into e2 uh do you oh. think it's a draw or you are winning it was actually very difficult to uh, guess but i had seen this 
uh this uh, resulting ending when i played g5 on move uh, 41 because i wanted to block all her pawns and so that my king would go to b2 straight away and she doesn't get f4 to stop my king e5 and when she played rook d2 on 42nd move i was sure she is going to play rook e2 in exchange so i, I was uh, very happy when she played it actually okay here uh, the ending is not very easy for white to defend because my straight plan is to get the king on b2 and just collect the pawn then try for a4 and uh, create a passer and uh, if she tries to get the king on c2 then she needs one move f3 to yeah uh, then f2 is hanging her pawn. right yeah and if she plays uh, if she just gets a king on c2 and puts the bishop on c4 then i get bishop f2 and somehow i can try to create a passer with f5 so somehow so somehow uh, i felt this because of her pawn on d5 her bishop has very less squares on this diagonal yeah i was also trying to understand so, this end game but let's imagine in the game king f6 yeah. king f3 king e5 uh, she went bishop c4 king d4 king e2 of course uh, yeah. improvements are possible but when uh, sh she went king yeah. you went king c3 bishop b5 king b2 uh, if she just stays yeah. where she is and let's say she doesn't move uh, how do you win for example i play bishop c6 on move 50 and then you play king into a2 i play yeah. bishop a4 uh doesn't seem like uh, yeah, how right. do you make progress yeah it's actually difficult for black but now my idea is to get the king again back to e5 and then try for king f4 king g3 so maybe but no I, i'm going before. to keep my key, pawn on f2 this is the point i won't play f3 Ah, I think uh, oh, maybe maybe here, for example, King B two. Um, yeah. Okay, King maybe F. Maybe straight Bishop A four. Sorry. Straight Bishop A four on after King. Yeah, B2 after King into A two, Bishop A four, King B two. I play King F three, perhaps. Uh, then you play King C three, King E two, King D four, King F three. Uh, and and oh sorry, uh, D five is hanging. So Bishop C six uh, over there. C six at one point. After King D four. and then after yeah. you play king e4 um yeah i have to wait yeah but now i get a zugzwang position because now if you play bishop to somewhere on uh, a8 h1 file then i get a4 ah okay and so if, if i if yeah. i have to keep d5 defended if i play bb7 you will go a4, a4. b a4 b3 and, and b3. Uh, i think this is bad for me yeah and uh, if you keep the bishop on e8 a4 diagonal then i get d5 pawn and then again i'll try to get the king on c3 and push the pawn till d3 M maybe so, i should be more careful uh, in this position but i can i can get the point that it's a very tricky end game very tricky end game especially when there are uh, there is less time on the clock correct so so yeah. beautiful uh, play here uh and and you won yeah. this just to show the viewers how you won this end game she went king d2 sure. you took on f2 and then uh you brought your bishop you took on a2 gave up the a4 pawn uh like played a4 and then you had a passer on b on the b file but uh you couldn't make progress there so you brought your king to the other side uh, yeah. <laughs> the actually uh, uh, yeah sorry yeah, king works so really hard in this game Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, on move number forty-first, I had missed one uh, tactical uh, move. It was f five. Yes. But I think this happens when we are too much focused on positional play. Sure. So we are, yeah. So uh, this f five would have given me win much earlier. I felt because after g f five, rook f seven, and somehow I'm attacking the pawn on f two with bishop and the rook. So she cannot take on g six. This would have been a much faster way. To much win. faster, yeah. But I was too much tempted to go into the uh, opposite B ending, so I could not see any other options. <laughs> right. So Bhakti, uh, great congratulations. You you know since the uh, unified women national championship has begun since last Thank two you. years, you have won it yeah. continuously. Eight yeah. lakh rupees. That's that's quite a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah. Really working very hard, especially on openings, and for that I would really like to uh, say thanks to international master Ravi Teja who had helped me before Asians, and um, Ravi Teja, yeah, he has very nice opening knowledge, and uh, yeah, it really helped me in Asians also. So, so you you have you 
we yeah. have a good team now uh, building up like uh, ragunandan yes. uh, gokhale ji then you have yes. uh, ankit rajpara yes. you have ravi teja so yes. this is re- yeah. really nice it's very nice team and they are young so uh, it's helping me a lot yeah yeah, yeah they are they, in and touch and they are in touch right. basically they are playing and i think yeah lot. ravi teja is going with the indian team to abroad as their coach so yeah he is a very up to date yeah and bhakti uh, b- when you play such a national championship do you follow a routine or something every day that you yes definitely because i think uh, during the tournament it's very important to follow a uh, particular routine so for example i was staying with uh, arti rama swami and she's a very sweet roommate i, I would say she would not uh, disturb me because i used to uh, be awake till 12:30 at night uh, preparing chess and um, okay we had morning rounds at 9 o'clock so i used to see chess till 12:30 and then uh, after waking up at 6:30 in the morning i i do my pranayam yoga for half an hour and then again uh, maybe at 7:15 to 8:15 or 8:30 i used to see some chess before because i really feel very comfortable seeing chess before the round it keeps me yeah it keeps me it keeps my brain active and i try to solve some tactics and then after the round i try to immediately I, actually i cannot uh, resist i immediately come and put my games uh, on chess base and try to see whether i have missed chess base and try to see whether i have missed something or not i've missed something or not and then uh, i do some uh, again yoga for one hour so that's my routine yeah and after the pairing comes uh, me and my coach uh, gokhale sir we work on it uh, and we try to figure no, out this what, is tremendous uh, what the half an hour yoga in the morning one hour yoga so in the evening did you, did you learn specifically or is it from online youtube videos oh, no i have actually learned uh, yeah learned it and do you, do you do you go to classes in goa i used to go yoga? actually uh, my aunt uh, she is sushma godbole she stays in uh, margaon only just next to my place so she's like my mother and uh, yeah she taught me yoga so yeah so it's very so it's very one. beneficial because after doing it for 2 months i am right now realizing the effect of it so uh, earlier i used to be really shivering in the time pressure and all but nowadays i am very calm and cool even if i'm playing on few seconds so and i'm i'm really focused nowadays i felt because because of this yoga and meditation uh, my concentration has improved a lot so, yeah, yeah. I, i i remember uh, like a few years ago when you were when we were speaking uh, the love for chess that always existed in you but now i think you have started working uh, very very intelligently on the game and you are seeing the results like you are working on all phases of the game uh, yeah. and this is a great change yeah. uh That's so true. bhakti uh, what's next for you are you going to play some uh, tournaments now uh actually i have been playing continuous tournaments uh, maybe more than 2 years so i need a break now but okay my friend vijay lakshmi is going to organize one blitz uh, tournament it it would be blitz open uh, uh, rating tournament so on 15th of august so i am actually looking forward to, uh, so you will go it. to chennai to play over there uh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. great and and we had yes. one question when you were leading this tournament and you know we had uh, daily reports coming on chess base india would you read them or would you be like no i will read it after the tournament actually i used to read them because uh, okay my my uh, hotel was around 10 kilometers from the venue so vijay lakshmi had got her car it was very convenient for all four of us so we used to go by her car and in that 15 minutes i used to listen to music and i used to read your reports actually <laughs> at 9:30 to 9:45 <laughs> so so you so, were reading all the yeah, reports and uh, g- gaining some uh, uh, ideas uh, but okay majorly it was always your games that were being analyzed by yeah, satanic yeah, yeah. uh, and one, one more thing also. was because i was winning the uh, winning the games it it would give me lot of happiness to see my games again in the report so <laughs> so before the round i feel it is very important to be happy uh, so that it gets reflected in the game so i was trying to do everything that makes me happy <laughs> yeah 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 correct yeah so there are a lot of things uh, i think to take away from from today's interview uh, i'm sure people will benefit a lot yeah, out, sure. out of it uh, and this is one thing which uh, we should all learn from bhakti she's never shied away from sharing her knowledge or 
sharing it with people and and as you can see she is uh, improving so yeah, bhakti thank thanks you. a lot for sharing all of your <laughs> secrets uh, on how you became sure. the national champion twice in a row thank you so much sagar i really enjoyed showing my games as well thank you bye yeah thank you bye